Is it just me, or do refs have too much power in college basketball games? It seems to be a problem throughout sports, but many think that college basketball has the worst of it. Last night, as March Madness began, the final game of the evening slate was Samford versus Kansas. Samford had not been to the tournament in seemingly 100 years, and Kansas is a regular team who's fighting for national championships year in and year out. While many predicted the Kansas Jayhawks to win that game, Samford did not give up fighting. After being down nearly a quarter of 100 points, Samford would rally all the way back, completely frazzle the Jayhawks, and then with just under 20 seconds to go, they were only down one point. Kansas would inbound the ball, and their superstar center Hunter Dickinson would get the ball in his hands and would look to pass the ball down the court. After looking around, he ended up finding his teammate Nicholas Timberlake for what seemingly would be a wide open dunk to put the team up three and give them an insane advantage. Pretty much everybody watching this game outside of Kansas fans were rooting for Samford to make the comeback, and it was quite apparent in the stands that everybody wanted them to win. As Timberlake would go to the rim, he would elevate for a dunk, and it looked like the game was going to be over. Except, Samford defender AJ Staten McRae had, in my opinion, one of the best blocks I've ever seen. He got his hand purely on the ball, which caused Timberlake to change direction in the air. The ball would obviously not go in, Timberlake would grab onto the rim, and then had a hard fall to the ground. At first glance when I was watching it, I assumed it was a foul, but part of me was saying to myself, that looked completely clean. The refs would end up blowing the whistle, and would call a foul. This would give Timberlake two shots at the rim, but as he would approach the free throw line, everyone pretty much watched in horror, as they realized this was one of the worst calls we have ever seen. It was a completely clean block, and now instead of the ball going Samford's way down one, it was going to be given to Kansas, who would now hit two free throws and go up three. Samford would then drive the ball down the court and force up a low percentage three-point shot before Kansas would get the ball back and John Furphy would hit a free throw. Kansas would end up winning the game by four, and we got to see a 93-89 thriller. Except, honestly, we all got robbed, Kansas fans included. So as many of you guys who watch the channel know, I am a diehard Mizzou fan. Of course, there is a big rivalry between Mizzou and Kansas, but I actually really don't have anything against them. I want to open up by saying that because people are going to think I'm biased, but I'm truly not. Kansas really isn't at fault for this. This is a problem going on in all of sports. The referees have way too much power, replays are going on way too long, and the calls that actually need to be reviewed or replayed aren't allowed to be called. Kansas was the better team for the entirety of that game last night. They deserve to win this game without an asterisk, but now everybody is saying they are fake, they are fraudulent, and that they would not have won without the refs. People do need to remember that Kansas was still up one point, and there was no guarantee that Samford was even going to hit a shot. But this screws everybody. Kansas fans don't get to enjoy a win, they have an asterisk next to it, and then Samford fans got robbed of an opportunity to win the game. All sports fans got robbed as well, as most fans, whether diehard or casual, watch March Madness for the insane endings, the buzzer beaters, or the upsets. Everyone last night lost, except the ref who made the call. He got a chance to etch his name in NCAA tournament bad call history, and this just absolutely sucks. As you go around Twitter and all different social media sites, everybody is consistently bringing up one thing, the replay system. Last night, it felt like the crew spent 15 to 20 minutes at the replay monitor, reviewing how much time should be on the clock, if the ball grazed off someone's fingertips, or just whatever else they wanted to go look at. In college basketball, for some reason, the refs have the ability to pretty much look at everything, except absolutely crucial calls. I will say as a sports fan, I'm sick and tired of replay in both football and basketball, but honestly, the one occasion where I actually want replay, we don't get to have. Last night, we wasted a bunch of time seeing if the ball went off KJ Adams' hands when the ref clearly saw it, and then we also worried about getting 0.2 or 0.3 more seconds on the clock. What we didn't get to look at was if it was actually a foul or not. It's quite obvious to pretty much everybody except Nick Timberlake himself that he was obviously blocked fair and square, and that the ball would have ended up in Samford's hands. If Nick Timberlake didn't have an awkward fall, then it would have been a play on, and we would have had an unbelievably exciting last 10 seconds. No one has any idea what would have happened, but I guarantee you, it would have been thrilling, people would have been on the edge of their seats, and there wouldn't be any complaints. Except probably from Nick Timberlake. Last night when he was asked if he was fouled or not, he said he was. I don't know whether Coach Shelf told him to say that, or if he actually believes it, but he may be the only person in the entirety of the world who thought he was fouled. To me, this just epitomizes what is going on in sports. We waste a bunch of time replaying things that don't really matter, we're allowed to review if 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 0 0.3 seconds goes off the clock, and we spend a million hours looking at things that don't actually have a super big impact on the game. 
but when a huge decisive foul call happens, we are not allowed to look at that. Now, I'm not saying that everything should be reviewed and that all of a sudden every foul should be challenged, but just like in the NFL after that phantom pass interference call in the Rams Saints game, there was a rule change that came from it. It caused so much backlash and so much scrutiny that they had to add in a clause to make the game a little bit more fair. That's honestly what I'm going to start advocating for in sports. I think each team should get one challenge, and last night would have been the perfect example of when to use it. One tweet I saw that made me laugh was talking about how we're trusting one 55-year-old guy's eyesight from 20 feet away over 45 different camera angles who clearly show something else. That leads me into the second issue I have. Referees have way too much control over the game. The NBA ref everyone knows about how bad the referee situation is in the NBA, but in college basketball, it is quite obvious that the refs have way too much control over the outcome of games. Personally, I don't really care or buy into it, but pretty much after every outcome, there's someone posting about the discrepancies of fouls called between teams. A prime example of that is Zach Eady in Purdue this year. Eady could be on pace to make the most free throws in NCAA history, and I see both sides to the argument. No, Zach Eady should not just be able to throw himself in the paint and get a foul call every time he goes up for a shot, but at the same time, there really is no other way to stop him. He's a 7-foot monster, and unless you make serious physical contact with him, or really try to disrupt his movement, then he's not going to miss the shot. Now I'm sure plenty of you guys will point out some examples of when there were missed calls on Edy, and I agree, they probably should have been called, but there's a lot of tricky situations going on with being a ref. Either way though, they have way too much control over each and every matchup. Last night was the complete and utter epitome of it. Now I'm going to make more of a controversial take, as the last time I think there was a call this controversial, we have to go back to the Final Four. In 2019, Auburn was starting to surge with their veteran guards and their experienced head coach Bruce Pearl, and after making a run all the way to the Final Four, Virginia found themselves trailing. Near the end of the game, Ty Jerome obviously double dribbled, and he even admits it when he's asked. The referees obviously missed this call, and had they called it correctly, Virginia probably doesn't go to the national championship game, and they definitely don't get what happens next. While there are plenty of disagreements on whether it was a foul or not, as Kyle Guy went up for a three-pointer in the corner, he was fouled. I guess by definition, his arm was touched, but to say it really had any effect on the shot or should have been called in that circumstance is where most people disagree. Honestly, I don't even know what my opinion is, as I was a Purdue basketball fan at the time, and they had just lost by way of a buzzer beater, so I was obviously anti-Virginia advancing. As much as I hate to admit it, Bruce Brown should not have touched his arm, and he just really should not have done that if he didn't want to have a foul called. But to be fair, it wasn't that egregious, and to call that in the final four with just a couple seconds left seemed to be a little bit ticky-tacky. But my main problem was, there was no way to challenge what Ty Jerome did a few moments earlier. Had the referees not had so much control, and there was an option for each team or coach to challenge a play, then we don't even have to put ourselves in that situation because Ty Jerome commits that double dribble and the ball goes to Auburn. Maybe that example doesn't really apply, I don't really know, I'm just sort of rambling at this point. But there's a problem in college basketball. I'm sick and tired of the referees having so much control over the outcome of games, especially in crunch time, and there needs to be a way to hold them in check. Now there's a ton of people who have conspiracies about betting and all that stuff, and I don't really buy into that, but to be fair, there is nothing stopping that from happening. The refs can sort of do whatever they want, and if you have one rogue referee who decides to make a questionable call, not only can his counterparts not do anything about it, but the coaches, the replay system, and the system as a whole can't do anything to stop it. They have way too much power, and last night was the epitome of it. In my opinion, there could end up being a Samford rule change that gives each coach one challenge and the opportunity to hold the referees in check. Maybe that should just be a rule they apply for the NCAA tournament, but I don't really know. It seems the referees have too much power, and if they're going to spend 40 hours each game looking at the replay monitor for stupid little things and second-guessing and checking everything else, then why not give the coaches one more challenge or go to the replay monitor one more time a game to check something that actually matters, that actually affects the outcomes of people's games, changes people's lives, and makes the sport more fun as a whole. But again, what do I know? I'm just rambling. I decided to turn on my microphone and talk about this. No idea if the video will do well, but let me know your thoughts down below. Should there be a rule change? Do you think refs have too much power? And how do you think the refs and replay system are affecting college football? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you're going to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out my video about Oakland's star player who went off against Kentucky last night. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.